Welcome back to the news today. This is the Daily Debate. A new report from the Adva Center claims that Netanyahu's government is challenging and changing and channeling funds to uh, West Bank settlements at the uh, expense of communities inside the pre-1967 lines. It notes uh, settlements getting the most money for education and social welfare. And it's an issue causing controversy in Israel. Like always, with me to talk a little bit about controversy is Dr. Martin Sherman, CEO of Israel Institute for Strategic Studies. Good evening. Thank you very much for coming. And also Lior Amichai uh, of uh, uh, Settlement Watch in the organization Peace Now. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you very much. So uh, before we will start um, talking and not arguing at all about this, let's take a look about what our viewers had to say about this. Good evening, Nurit. Good evening, Lucy. So this report that you mentioned is just one of several suggesting that too much money, or at least more money, is going to the settlements from the Israeli government than to other municipalities. So we asked our viewers, does the Israeli government system actually encourage settlements? Let's first of all look at the poll, see what our viewers had to say globally. 57% said the policy does, 33% said no. So let's take a look at what our viewers had to say. Just a little sampling uh, for your guests. Fanny Wolf said yes, settlements receive substantial funding from the state, sometimes more in some large cities, as well as protection of the army. That's an important point. Defense money and actual uh, manpower definitely goes to defending the settlement. Eyal Berna said, if it is, the Israeli public should demand answers. Israelis want to live in peace, both inside Israel and with its neighbors. And these toxic policies give the country more than a bad name. In the end of the day, he's saying it is the Israeli public that's responsible for complaining to the Israeli government, for demanding a different sort of policy. Ben Chemo said, the majority in Israel has learned its lesson with the withdrawal from Gaza and Gush Katif. We're talking about 2005, of course. It profoundly marked Israeli society to no longer tolerate this. It's uh, debatable if he's actually referring to the public not tolerating the settlements anymore or not to tolerating leaving the settlements. So maybe your guests can kind of talk a bit about what the Israeli public feels towards that. Let's go also to J.A. Bell, who said it must be made clear what settlements are funded and how. He says, though, Obama likes to refer to them as one unit. It's a lot more complex than that. I think uh, here in Israel, we definitely see that and hear that a lot. And I want to end with Simon, because we have a lot of heavy subjects here between ISIS and uh, the Middle East in general. So uh, I wanted to end with a little humor from Simon, who said, no, the Israeli political system does not encourage settlements. The Israeli political system encourages idiots and they encourage settlements. So whether that's actually humor or fact uh, is also debatable. I'll send it back to you. <laughs> Yes, uh, Nurit, uh, thank you very much for this. Um, okay, Israel knows that it's a really big issue all around the world against Israel. Israel knows that um, it's not like in favor to continue building settlements uh, in the West Bank or in any settlements around the West Bank. Why to continue doing it? And in one way or another, it's also hurting Israelis who are not living in settlements and need this money for something else. Martin. Well, I wonder if uh, the people in uh, Shderot and the Gaza Belt feel that they're better off now than uh, they were when we had settlements in Gaza. And this whole issue of settlements and the cost is a red herring. It's just absolute rubbish. Because they, they said exactly the same things about the settlements in Gaza, how much it costs, and et cetera, et cetera. And so they demolished the settlements. They raised them to the ground. The only buildings left standing there were, were synagogues and high-tech uh, greenhouses. The synagogues, the, 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 the Palestinians desecrated within uh, seconds of, of uh, the, the IDF leaving. And the, uh, the high-tech uh, 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 hothouses were, were also destroyed rather than being used productively. So the whole thing about how much money is being spent on, on uh, the uh, settlements is, is a complete red herring, as I say, because when they, when they pulled out of Gaza, no one took into account the cost of uh, a pillar of defense. No one took into the cost cost lead. No one took into the cost um, of uh, uh, protective edge. No one took into the cost of reinforcing all the classrooms, et cetera, et cetera. So that, that's just, just one aspect. But on, on the other hand, if you don't have the settlements, what are you going to have there? Either a vacuum or a Muslim tyranny. So what would you rather have? Settlements, no man's land, which will become Somali, or a Muslim tyranny? 
What are you going to happen? <laughs> well, I think uh, uh, it, it, I, th I agree with Martin on, on one thing, that it's not an issue about the costs. Uh, the settlements are wrong by so many reasons and are causing so many problems uh, by various reasons. Uh, for the first, uh, it's an international. Uh, they're, they're, they're causing uh, wait, wait. problems. I, I listen to you, Martin. Please let me. Because, because, because Martin, of this gentleman's please. organization. Uh, because they cause so many problems and because we, we, we face these problems, unlike you. Uh, there's no vacuum in the West Bank or in the Gaza Strip. There's Palestinians who live there. And we take them into account because we have to recognize reality. Uh, that the fact that's, uh, that we learned today from the Adva report and the Mulad report and other reports that came out today by Kalkalist newspaper, for example, is not only this, this is an outrageous because the government of Israel does not have any plan uh, how to deal with the Palestinians, to, to realize and to look into the, the, the reality and see that Palestinians live in the West Bank and the Gaza Strip, but also that they are coming on the expense of the Israeli public. You know, the Mulad report published today uh, that comes from official papers by the Ministry of, uh, of the Eco Economy Ministry, the Financial Ministry, shows that the people of Ashkelon, for example, come, receive from the settlement division per citizen 100 or 12 shekels, while settlements like Beit El, like uh, Itzhar, like other settlements deep in the West Bank that by no means could ever resolve a two-state solution, receive thousands of shekels, which is much, much higher. We're seeing a policy of increasing uh, radical settlements uh, on the expense of the Israeli public. So you know, that's, that's we're not even talking about maybe the Palestinian-Israeli issue. We are talking about it's it's like he said uh, about the expense on our backs on the Israeli public who is paying taxes who needs this money to education systems to welfare systems to and God knows that in other in the south they need the money more than the settlements so if you moved all the settlements to the south the same people who are getting the money in the settlements now wouldn't be getting it in the south? Much it's less. It's, much what, less. No, what, why much less? Because in Ashkelon why, why they receive 12 shekels but from they the get, but yeah, but how much division. They in Ramat Aviv? In, in how much they receive in Savion? How much they receive in Savion? If you want a comparison, you know, you know that's very, it's, it's the same with water consumption. People say, you know, well, the, the, the settlers consume much more water than, 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 than the Palestinians. But people in Savion consume much more water than people in Batyam. So what's that? But that the, 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 it's, it's a matter of demand, not a matter of supply. And, uh, and, and that's, that's, that's the point. It's a complete but distortion. That's, it's but a complete that's, distortion. That's far, a far from accurate. A complete distortion. It was a far from accurate. In Savion, they don't use more water no, than the people it, in Batyam. It's far from accurate because when we see, when we look in comparative analysis between the settlements in all regional councils, despite any of them, we see that the set, even settlements that are from Ashkelon and other, even uh, communities within Israel, like Ashkelon and others who need this money, receive much, much less oh, from high profile that. settlements like Beit El who live fairly well. And so, we what, what are you saying? Yair Lapid, Yair Lapid, Yair Shatid, if, where's the money, Minister of Finance? He's the guy who's, 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 who's fattening oh, the settlements, uh, really? In, indeed, really? The, his really? sitting in the government yeah, is supporting really. this because he's following the policy of Naftali Bennett. He's not doing anything about it, indeed. Oh, really? I, I, yeah. I, I, wonder, I wonder what. How, uh, what's, what is the great influence that Naftali Bennett has over you? Well, I'll, tell you I'll tell you one influence, for example. The, the budget of the Sutherland Division, while it's in budget, receives about 58 million. What we've seen today, it published by the Kalkaris, is that it, through the financial ministry, it expands by more than 600%, by more than 300 million shekels that are being transferred out of the budget without public debate, w without us knowing exactly where the money is transferred, except from the settlements, where uh, more than 75% of it go to the settlements. You know, I'm asking myself, I'm sitting in, I'm living today in Tel Aviv. I'm tax, uh, I'm a taxpayer citizen in, in Israel. Um, my parents are, um, I'm paying national, uh, uh, let's say, uh, national security uh, 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 money to, uh, for me being older and, and having, why should my tax money, to have a pension, why should my tax money uh, go to settlements. Why should it go to settlements? Why should it go to settlements? Why should it, why should why it should not go, go to, settlements to my Because that is an Israel why proper. Why should why? it not go to? I'm not even but, talking but, about the Palestinians. But, why should it not why, go to my should, own welfare? Why, why should the, the, the money being paid for education? Uh, in the settlements and and municipal needs in the settlements, you can ask exactly the same the same uh, question about up, up markets uh, uh, settlements in the Galilee. But the Galilee well, needs this money. And well, why is it said, that, that, the that's a political question? More. But that's a political question. But the why do they need? Why because the, the settlements receive much more. Uh, you, you know what? I've this spoken, is a political uh, question, like you're saying. It's just a political but, question. But this, because this, you could ask exactly money. the same question about upmarket uh, settlements in the Galilee. Okay, uh, fair uh, enough. Then you can say that the government 
Islamic Omer, division has Ola, no intention Ola. of reaching a two-state solution. Of course it hasn't. I wish, and I certainly hope it hasn't. I mean, you're, you're really still pushing a, settled, a two-state solution. Haven't you been watching the news? I, I, Haven't indeed, you been I watching have. the news? You really want to bring Ben Gurion into mortar range? You really want to have a border 450 kilometers long, uh, 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 adjacent to your most populated area, with thousands of tunnel lines and either? That's your solution, yes, really? I think, really? I think, I think indeed that the two-state solution is much more powerful than what the the right wing, the radical right wing that is leading this government is leading to. Uh, oh, uh, she, what are they leading uh, to? Do you it, know what they're leading no, to? I don't know what they're leading exactly, to. Exactly, because they have no policy. And during this policy, their policy is uh, to support radical settlements that have no future in the state of Why Israel. Why are you saying that? But on what basis are you saying that? Uh, let, me, let me ask you something. Ariel should stay there or should be removed? Of course, Ariel is a political question that the government has to negotiate. What does Peace Now say I, about I'll it? tell you exactly what Peace Now says. Uh, peace, uh, peace Now says that Ariel is a huge problem for a two-state solution. Who set up, who set up Ariel? Wait, wait. Who set up Ariel? Uh, Ariel was created in 1978 by radical uh, no, ideological no, Jews. No, Indeed, like, no, yes, no, yes. not at all. The land for Ariel was, 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 was set but, aside but, by, but, by Shimon Peres uh, and but Uzan. Let me tell you Shimon Peres, who was uh, Minister of Defense, and Uzan, who was Minister of Agriculture, allocated the land for Ariel, Ariel and, 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 and Kiryat Arba was but, set up by, at, by but, Yigal Alon. But look, at, but look at this policy. Ariel is at the heart of the West Bank. Ariel has a university, despite the entire university system within Israel, thinks that there shouldn't be a university Who there. thinks there shouldn't be a the university? The entire universities in Israel uh, because, went to the Supreme because, Court against lost, the university in Ariel and lost, and lost because and it's lost. government policy oh, to the support the, it. The government, the government policy, the government can impose decisions on, on, on the High Court. <laughs> That's news for everyone. You know, you said that this is, a, this is a political uh, question, uh, and this is uh, Ariel is a political question. But uh, this money is going is uh, and being invested on ideological ideas. But so the ideological, ideological, is also ideological. But ideological the, ideas that I don't agree with. Judaizing the Galilee. A lot of don't agree with. Why Jude, should I pay money as a citizen of Israel to something that I don't believe in? That's something that I don't support. Because that's 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 democracy. Do you, like why, why would you? Like the why would you? Why would you? Why you can ask about anything? Why why would, you pay, why would you pay money for a settlement in, in the Negev? Okay, let's suppose they all voted for the for, 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 for National Religious Party. Why would you vote but for a settlement? Because, because, the, they're, because, citizens, because they're, citizens, the, they're citizens and they deserve the benefits and of the taxes they, sit they play. within the state of Israel. Uh, the government of Israel is ignoring completely. And if it wants to remain in occupying power of more than 4 million well, see, Palestinians... But that's not an economic question. Even, that's not an economic question. What about the Golan? Exactly. Why and what about the Golan? The oh, exactly. So I, you I, would like you would you would like the Golan to have been uh, uh, not to develop the Golan, which if we if we followed your recipe, Al Qaeda would be sitting on Al Nusra would be sitting on the, on, on on the cliffs overlooking the Kinneret and into the winds no, of Tiberias. Like, great want, idea. If you want to remain in occupying power, no, not we want, giving we don't, we don't not want, giving civilian rights to so many Palestinians, to millions of Palestinians, then go, go ahead. This that's is a, a, different that's a different debate. You know, that's you know, a different want, debate. That's a different debate. That's a different debate. You know, Giving the, this... what, what the Palestinian solution should be is one thing. The costs of the settlement compared to the alternative. If you have a 450 kilometer border adjacent to the, the Trans-Israel Highway, overlooking your main runway at Tel Aviv, what do you think? It's going to be free to, to, to secure that? So, it so, would so, be but, much easier than no, the border no, no, than no, to no, safeguard Ariel, oh, which is yes, deep in the West oh, Bank. Oh, yes. We've, oh, seen, we've seen how easy it is. Yes, We've had millions 20 of kilometers. Three times. It's in the heart of the West Bank. How are you going to defend three that? Three times. Three times. Exactly. That's why that's why you can't have a long you know, finger in I there. Want, so I it's exactly three times we've seen how easy it is to defend want, uh, uh, citizens here when millions have had to have had to have had to huddle in shelters because the people who told us we should leave Gaza and we'll have more we'll have more security. I mean, what, contrary, what, what would have to happen? I what would have to happen for you to admit that you were wrong? I will but tell you again, exactly again, the opposite. I want to uh, understand. I, you're going again to the Palestinian <laughs> two-state solution, and I don't want to go to the uh, two-state solution because this is a huge problem for Israelis, people who are living here. Why this money is not going to, for example, the problems that uh, South Tel Aviv is facing. Because Why, they're citizens just as well. Second, why this money is not going to the Bedouin problem in the Negev, in the south of Israel, that are serving in the army and don't have proper infrastructure to live in. Why this money is going to people and continuing to, uh, to develop people that 
in in one way or another are a huge diplomatic problem to Israel. Well, that's that's a different question because Israel's well, pub, Israel, Israel's, Israel's public diplomacy has been completely incompetent and impotent in explaining the issue of the settlements. The settlements were begun by the Labour Party. Shimon Peres, in a book written uh, tomorrow, is now wrote a glowing, a glowing report on why we should develop settlements. I wanted to bring the quote, I just didn't have time before I got to the, the, stu the studio, saying how we have to develop all the areas around, around uh, Jerusalem, and he gives the names, Gilo, Bethel, etc., etc., why we have to develop them. Yigal, Yigal Alon, in 1969, wrote a letter to the settlers of Kiryat Alba, apologizing that he couldn't be okay. at, the, at, the, and, at the first yeah. circumcision. And, uh, and Lucia Rich is telling <laughs> you that we have only 20 seconds left. Uh, gentlemen, thank you very much uh, for saying, not that I'm putting myself in front of Shimon Peres and Igal Alon. Uh, gentlemen, thank you very much uh, for coming to the studio. We're going out for a small break, two minutes break, and then we will be back for the I-24 News one-on-one. -on -one. Don't go anywhere.